U.S. intelligence officials are warning of a new election interference threat, and it's coming from the same source as 2016, Russia. These officials brief lawmakers and, White, and the White House on the matter, and they say that Moscow is working partly to improve Mr. Trump's 2020 re-election chances. The news is bringing a denial from the Kremlin and fury from President Trump. Paula Reed is at the White House. All right, Paula, let's get into this. What are your sources telling you about the White House's reaction to these briefings, which are, you know, briefings that are mandated? They have to happen by law, as I understand them. Good morning, Anne-Marie. Well, I've learned that the president was furious that McGuire allowed one of his subordinates to give a briefing to House lawmakers, uh, suggesting that they had intelligence showing that Russia favors President Trump in 2020. The president is concerned that that information could be weaponized against him in the general election. And now both sides are predictably playing politics. Democrats, they're demanding more hearings, while Republicans are questioning the underlying evidence. With your help this November, we are going to defeat the radical Democrats. At a campaign rally in Colorado, President Trump ignored reports that Russia was trying to help him get reelected. Multiple sources tell CBS News that intelligence officials warned lawmakers and the White House that Russians are continuing their efforts to interfere in the 2020 election. A senior administration official tells CBS News the president repeatedly called it bull and complained that the information could be used against him by Democrats. Like Adam Schiff, the House intelligence chairman who led the president's impeachment case, weighed in, tweeting, the president is again jeopardizing our efforts to stop foreign meddling. But Republican officials challenged the depth, credibility and scope of the evidence. Everybody was talking about how the new thing is, oh, they're back to Russia again. Nobody's going to believe this garbage. Echoing the same attacks President Trump has launched for two years. Russia, 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 nonsense. All the scams. President Trump has repeatedly challenged his own intelligence officials and instead sided with Russia. I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this, I don't see any reason why it would be. Just this month, his own FBI director, Christopher Wray, warned Russia is still intent on interfering in U.S. elections. We certainly are seeing uh, and, and have never stopped seeing really since 2016 uh, efforts to engage in malign foreign influence by the Russians. CBS News has learned the president was furious that his acting director of intelligence, Joseph McGuire, allowed the briefing without Mr. Trump's knowledge. On Wednesday, the president announced McGuire would be replaced with U.S. Ambassador to Germany, Richard Grinnell. The choice was blasted by Democrats like Jim Himes. A man with zero intelligence experience to be, to sit atop the intelligence community of the United States. All right, Paula, so what do we know about McGuire's involvement in the intelligence briefing? Well, we know that this was conducted by one of his subordinates, and the president is frustrated that he would allow one of his subordinates to go and brief House lawmakers on something like this without first seeking the president's permission. Now, we know that is not a requirement. He does not necessarily need to tip the president to everything uh, that House lawmakers have been briefed on, but that's really the crux of the president's frustration. He clearly wants someone in that role who he believes uh, is loyal to him and will ultimately protect him, even though none of that is in the official job description. But the intelligence is what it is, right? I mean, no matter who delivered the information, it was going to be what it is. Russia indeed has been meddling, and I don't think Russia has stopped meddling, and certainly the intelligence community doesn't believe Russia has stopped meddling, and uh, it was going to have to be a bipartisan meeting. It, would it even matter who was delivering the information? Well, it does matter who is delivering the information, and it's important what information was conveyed. We're learning this morning that what was presented to lawmakers were some conclusions uh, based off the intelligence, but not the actual intelligence itself. Mm. And we've learned that while Republicans are trying to insist there was bipartisan pushback uh, on the intelligence, it's actually that there was bipartisan agreement that some of these lawmakers wanted to see the underlying intelligence to assess and maybe make their own conclusions. Interesting. So my next question was going to be, where do we go from here? You know, what happens next with this information? And I guess you just sort of talked a little bit about it. They're going to dig a little deeper. 
That's right. And you also have House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and others calling for more briefings, calling for more hearings. But at the same time, Republicans are pointing to the fact that we've been looking into this issue for several years. The president uh, was found not to have formally uh, colluded or conspired with Russia to help them in these efforts, even though the special counsel found uh, the Trump campaign was open uh, and willing to the idea of working with a foreign adversary. It's a touchy subject for the White House. It's a very touchy subject uh, for President Trump. And really the important thing is that lawmakers look at the threat and figure out a way to, to thwart it, mm. uh, a way to protect the democratic process. But both sides right now, I mean, they're thinking about 2020 and playing politics. So let's go back a little bit and just sort of remind us what it is that the intelligence community believes Russia did to meddle in the last presidential election. That's right. Well, the intelligence community believes Russia conducted a widespread campaign, different fronts. They had troll farms trying to pump out negative stories about Hillary Clinton, trying to bolster uh, President Trump. They argue that there was an effort to really sow discord in the U.S. So they created fake uh, events, fake Facebook groups on really divisive issues here in the U.S. Uh, guns, race, vaccines, anything to divide, sow chaos. Really, as I understand it, speaking with intelligence officials, the core uh, at the core of this mission is is the desire to sow doubts about democracy uh, so that it doesn't look very good uh, by comparison. Mm. And it wasn't necessarily that Russia loves Donald Trump and thinks he was great. They were trying to sow doubts about the outcome of the election. So doubts um, about the stability and reliability of the democratic process. That was ultimately Russia's goal in 2016. I'll leave it to your viewers to decide whether or not they succeeded. Mm -hmm. So Attorney General William Barr, FBI uh, Director Christopher Wray, and others actually penned an op-ed in USA Today on Wednesday warning of foreign interference in the upcoming presidential election. Is there a sense that the White House is taking this threat seriously? So the White House has not been very forthcoming about its efforts to protect uh, our elections. I've asked the president about this uh, during chopper talk. Uh, he says, look, like we're working on some things. He also repeats the talking point uh, that a lot of folks here in D.C. repeat, which is that our actual voting infrastructure is very difficult to hack uh, because a lot of people vote with a paper and a pencil. You can't really hack that, right? Um, but there are these larger campaigns which are conducted in great part on social media, pumping out disinformation. Uh, trying to sow doubt, confuse people, undermine the democratic process. That is very difficult to combat, and it, there does not appear to be any sort of coherent bipartisan plan to push back against these efforts. And it's not just Russia, of course. Other foreign adversaries have learned and seen what Russia did and are trying to do similar things. Um, before I let you go, got to ask you about Roger Stone and his sentencing. <laughs> he got far less than what uh, the initial sentencing guideline had suggested before the whole kerfuffle mm -hmm. about the Justice Department uh, intervening. Um, I'm wondering how the president is reacting to the news. Well, so far, the president has not promised that he will pardon Stone, but it was just a few hours after the sentencing that the president weighed in, and he once again went through his litany of complaints about that case, uh, attacking the judge, attacking the sentencing, attack attacking the jury, and the president said he would like to see Stone exonerated through the formal appeals process. Though it seems unlikely, based on the strength of the evidence that was presented in this trial, that would actually happen, and the president left open still the possibility that he could pardon his longtime friend. All right, Paula, thank you so much.